We're in need of some new outdoor furniture for our deck, and I like the look of this cedar chair, but $364 a piece seemed pretty steep. So I took that picture, jotted down some notes, and got started in the workshop. This design's based on 2x4s and 1x6s. So what you see here is cutting the legs for each of the chairs. So these are cut to 23 and 3 quarters long. There's a 7.5 degree angle that lets the leg canter back. Next was cutting the slats. These are the parts you sit on and the parts on the back. And they're designed to be 20 inches long and half a board wide. So you see I rip the board in half, then send the second half back through to make sure they're equal. If you do it just right, almost nothing should come off the saw in that second pass. So these end up being about two and three quarter inches. Once the slats are at the proper width, I send them through a quarter inch roundover bit so that those sharp edges turn into nice round corners. Next step is to glue a couple of pieces together. This is the support piece for the back, so you can think of this as the right and left hand side of the chair back. And I'm gluing them together so that they can hold the slats. You'll see how that works in a moment. Now the larger piece in this is really one of the slats that I cut, and the smaller piece is about an inch and a quarter wide as a support piece for the slats to be drilled into. Then I turned my attention to the design of the seat, and most of this was to get that curve right so it would be comfortable to sit in. And I just really took a guess here, just bent the ruler until it looked about right, and really spaced out the boards with about a quarter inch between each board. Once I had the design, I drew it out on a piece of 1x6 and took it to the bandsaw. You'll see that most of the pieces for this chair, it's a three-step process to get the wood ready. First, you bandsaw out the piece, typically on a 1x6. Then I bring it over to the spindle sander to clean up those lines. That's what I'm doing here. This is probably 60 grit or 80 grit. It's fairly aggressive. And once I have the contour that I like, I take it over to that quarter inch round over bit on the router table and uh, round over the parts that you'll see. The next is the obvious just sanding. I went down to, I think about 120 on every piece. So this was a couple of hours of sanding. On future chairs, I moved over to uh, oscillating powered sander and that went much faster. I wish I'd done that from the start. And then before I put it all together, I wanted to get the finish going while I could get access to all the parts of the boards. This is just T-coil. Just use an old t-shirt, rub on the T-coil. We'll see how it stands the test of the time, but, but the T-coil looks nice and it, it seems pretty durable. So here are all the components. You see the slats in the front there. There's a rounded piece that's the top of the back of the chair. The four two by fours are the legs. And then the final pieces there are the glued supports for the back and the bottom. In this next step, the slats are connected to the supports for the back and for the seat. You can see there I'm screwing them into the sides with a small headed deck screw. I'll put a link in the description for all the lumber and for all the hardware. I thought these deck screws would give it an added support over the wood glue, and I'm really happy with the way they look. They don't stick out very much, and uh, it's a very clean look to it. You also notice that I have these quarter inch MDF pieces between each board. I wanted a little space for, for the dirt and grime to go, and so each of these are spaced by exactly an MDF, and that was built into the design. Worked out well. You see here doing the same thing for the bottom, a little bit of outdoor glue on the bottom support, MDF spacers at a quarter inch, drill and screw. By the end of this, I got pretty quick at this. It took, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes to, to do a, either a seat bottom or a seat back. And again, these decking screws worked very well. All right, so at that point we had four legs, a bottom and a back. It was starting to look like a chair. And I was still designing at this point, so I clamped it all together and started to think through what the arms would look like. And the arms really tie it all together. They're structural. They're also part of the aesthetic, so I wanted to get some curves onto that. Once I cut out the, the design for the arm on some Luon, I traced that on the 1x6, and again, it's the same process. It's bandsaw, the 1x6, take it to the spindle sander, and ran off, round off the edges on the router table. Now, 
The first chair I built, I liked it a lot, but I thought the arm was a little bit short, so I actually ended up redesigning this arm on the second, third, and fourth table, uh, chair that I built. So I, my first prototype is a little different from the other four. It's about two inches shorter. Next step is to attach the legs. This is done with glue and with some stainless steel bolts. I think I ended up with three eighths inch bolts. I'll, I'll put the link in the description. But the general idea here is to get the seat bottom lifted up by a riser about 14 inches off the table and drill a hole through and secure with the bolt. And I do this on my assembly table so that it's perfectly flat and I can get the legs at exactly the right height and flat with the table for the proper angle. When I did more chairs, I ended up going with multiple supports as you saw in that last photo so that I could get all four corners at 14 inches exactly right. Now attaching the back is about the same as the legs. Just get everything clamped in place, drill a hole through, use one of the stainless bolts through the edges. That's how the bottom of the back is held. The top of the back is held by the armrest, which you'll see in just a moment. The armrest is attached with, with glue and screws, and uh, there's an interesting design element here that, that I've never seen anywhere else, but that armrest wraps around to the back support. I was a little wary to put a lot of weight on this backing with just a screw. I wanted to actually have wood behind it. Um, and it also, I like the look of the design. Like I said, I ended up changing this arm design slightly after I built the first one, but it wasn't too different. This is just two of the small headed decking screws through the top, and I ended up putting one decking screw through the back as well to hold it to the back. And here we have it. This is the inspiration and there's the final chair. I'll take a little walk around it. It's very secure. Again, it's all two by fours and one by six, so it's a very solid construction. You can see the bolts in the back. Those bolts hold the, the legs to the seat bottom and the back of the chair. You can see the wraparound design of the arms there to hold the back, make it a little more stable. And the slight curve that I put in the top of the arms and in the seat back there, or seat bottom there. I was happy with this design, so it was time to build three more copies. Here's a shot from the workshop after I've cut all the raw boards. There was something like 50 or 60 pieces to make three copies of this. This is after gluing and sanding. It was about two nights full of sanding. And then after the teak oil, there's the final result with the four. And here's the final product. We'll build a table for it next. Hope you enjoyed.